our count, Heavenly Father, Lord, we once again thank you for another Sabbath that you've given us. Sabbath that we have never seen before. And the Sabbath that we'll never see again. So we thank you, Lord, for having an opportunity to come into your midst. We ask you to continue that the Holy Spirit of God and leads us into all truth. Lord, and anything in our hearts and minds that is not right, we ask for forgiveness. We ask you, Lord, cast it as far as the east is from the west. Be with us, guide us, and watch over us, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, Lord. Open our hearts and minds and our thoughts, and we can be arrested with the attention of the Holy Spirit to be guided to all truth. That angels that excel in strength and camp around each and every one of us, Father. We thank you for those who come out to share the gospel tonight. We thank you for those who are on their way, Lord, those who couldn't make it for whatever reason may be, Lord. Prick their hearts so they know where they should be on this day. On bowing their knees and, and looking up to heaven and asking, What must I do to be saved? And asking is just the way to Mount Zion. So, Father, we ask you to be with each and every participant. In the Bible study, Lord, that we will bring words, fresh manna from heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, brothers and sisters, uh, can we get someone to say the fourth commandment that you found in Exodus 28 through 11? Amen. I'll recite it. Okay, Sister Michelle, go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Thank you, sister. Now we'll have a song sung by Sister Michelle. They are dying in the West. And for those who would like to sing along on mute, this is coming from our Time for Singing hymnals, hymn number 41, Day is Dying in the West. Day is dying in the West. Heaven is touching earth with rest. Wait and worship while the night sends her evening lamps alight through all the sky. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee. Heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. Lord of life beneath the dome of the universe, thy home. Gather us who seek thy face, to the fold of thy embrace, for thou art not holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. While the deepening shadows fall, heart of love unfolding all, through the glory and the grace, of the stars that fill thy face, our hearts ascend. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. When forever from our sight, past the stars, the day, the night, Lord of angels on our eyes, let eternal morning rise and shadows in. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. Thank you, sister. Amen. Now we can have a help the living segment. Praise the Lord and Holy Sabbath once again, everyone. Holy uh, Sabbath. Our, Holy Sabbath. Our, for those who may be hearing this for the first time, our healthy living segments are God's prescription for healthy living. And we know that um, there's a relationship between sin and sickness that traces all the way back to the Garden of Eden to our first parents. And we've learned and studied throughout the Bible and spirit of prophecy that the eight laws of health and God's natural, God's natural remedies and his 10 commandment moral law go hand in hand. If we offend in one, we're guilty of all. Amen. Yes. And so 
Our topic um, for today's healthy living segment is pineal gland, pineal gland. And um, you'll, I'll kind of give a segue into it before we begin, but before that, before I do that, could someone tell us what are the eight laws of health? Um, I think I can name them. Um, it's air, sunlight, exercise, rest, proper diet, water. Oh, man. Rest. And rest. Trust, and trust in God. Trust in God. That was it. Trust Praise, in God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Deborah, mm -hmm. for that. And, and we know that we can find those eight laws of health in um, the book, Ministry of Healing, page 127 by Ellen G. White. So we talked last Sabbath about the, does anyone remember what is the largest organ in the body? We talked about last Sabbath. Liver. Praise God. The, the pineal gland is the smallest organ in the body. And does anyone know anything about the pineal gland? Because I, I will admit um, everything I've read and I'm about to share, I was not aware of before I read read it. Does anyone know where the pineal, pineal gland is located? In the ovaries, ain't it? No, sir. When it, we're at an endeavor? Testings? The the in, in the endocrine system, the endocrine system, endocrine endocrine system. Yes. That secretes endocrine in, in the body. Yes. All right. I'm sure. Okay. So, so, um, I chose this topic because it's the smallest organ in the body, and we talked about the largest organ last Sabbath. But um, I'm just going to share a short, you know, introductory on what the pineal gland is and um, where it's located. And then I'll open it up to any comments and we'll just continue on um, at, our, at our morning session and closing session. The pineal gland, also called the pineal body or epiphysis cerebri, is a tiny gland in your brain that's located beneath the back part of the corpus col callosum. It's a part of our endocrine system and secretes the hormone melatonin. Your pineal gland's main job is to help control the circadian cycle of sleep and wakefulness by secreting melatonin. The pineal gland is shaped like a tiny pine cone, which is how it got its name, but it's not pronounced pineal gland, it's pronounced pineal gland, or pineal, excuse me, pineal gland. The pineal gland is the least understood gland of the endocrine system and it was the last part of the endocrine system to be discovered. Um, and just, just to give some quick definitions, the endocrine system is a network of several glands that create and secrete hormones. A gland is an organ that makes one or more substances like hormones, digestive juices, sweat, or tears. Endocrine glands release hormones directly into the bloodstream. And I'll close with this. Um, hormones are chemicals that coordinate different functions in the body by carrying messages through the blood to, to our organs, skin, muscles, and other tissues. These signals tell our body what to do, what to do and when to do it. Um, so it's very important as we go on through this healthy living segment, the next couple of sessions, knowing that our, our, there's a lot of, um, error or there, I'll say it this way. The devil is after the mind. Amen. Amen. And what I, what I was finding out, um, just Googling 
you know, the pineal gland and its importance, um, there are concepts online that refer to it as the third eye. And has anyone ever heard that that phrase, third eye? Yeah, but that's satanic. That, exactly. And that's that's why I wanted to bring from that the, out. From the dollar bill, too. Wow, that's so true. But um, we'll touch more on that. But before I before I read the foundational text, are there any comments or questions for what we've covered so far on the pineal gland? I got a, I got a, um, a question and a comment. More, more I guess, in a statement. Now, the pineal gland and other glands don't don't they tell the brain what to do or or how? Amen, Is that right? Amen brother um, Wayne. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm thinking about the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us into all truth, shows us things to come, brings all things to our remembrance, which, what we, we have, um, which is the truth, and, 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 and brings our sins to our remembrance also. And so I'm just thinking about the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. And, and what we have to do is is uh, the brain, I guess, would be identified as the as the soul, or anyway, that's just what I was thinking about. You know, um, maybe maybe one of you can help me out on that, or have a further comment or answer. Praise God. No, I I do see a it, that's a very good parallel, Brother Wayne, because. When, when it, when it, the fact that it sends messages, just like you were saying, the Holy Spirit is, is um, leading us and guiding and directing us in the way that we should go. And so um, we can sort of see the, the pineal glands function is to send messages through the bloodstream to different parts of the body to, and particularly when it comes to um one thing i did read and i'll share in the morning in the morning but um our sleep cycle it's very important that we are you know when when it's time to go to bed the the room is dark because all of that affects um our our restfulness the restfulness of our sleep and again messages are being sent um, through the body to for these purposes and so um, God created you know even day and night have a purpose when it comes to the bodily bodily function so praise God for that brother Wayne in any other comments and if there are none I will um... uh, when you said the uh, the pineal gland sends messages through the blood stream and you don't use the word message and blood. I'm thinking about the third angel's message, of course, which includes the first and second, the third angel's message, and the latter rain and the loud cry are messages which work together in cooperation with, with one another. But the message that's 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 given is 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 a blood it's a message of, of, of the blood of Christ as it were. Hallelujah. So, which is yeah. which is uh, our salvation. That's a, that's just another thought that came with those two words that we use. Message and blood. Praise the Lord. Yes. No, I very, very um powerful parallel to and and to help us understand the importance so pray praise god any anyone else and at now at this time i will oh yeah. yes go ahead that the uh the the blood 
applied by Christ or offered by Christ ceases with the third angel's message. When the third angel's message ceases, there's no more blood to be, uh, what can I say, applied to our lives, as it were, for salvation. Amen. Amen. Yes, very, very powerful, very powerful parallels and many, many parallels. At, at this time, I will read Proverbs chapter three, verses five through eight. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Amen. I'll now turn it back over to Brother MK. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Now, brothers, before we do our Bible study tonight, uh, our topic is the loud cry. Um, so, but we'll finish uh, just tonight by God's grace. Uh, but we're going to kind of re- Pick, pick a little bit on the third angel message and what God was trying to do to bring us, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on the third angel message. Well, we are, but mostly going to be in conjunction with the loud cry, uh, in conjunction with the uh, seven-day Sabbath and our lifestyle and uh, uh, also uh, what we should be doing now at present-day work. So in the conjunction, we're going to be dealing with the third angel message, in conjunction with the loud cry, which we end with the loud cry, which has to do with the observance of the Sabbath and our uh, and lifestyle uh, and activities of the remnant church, and then also the uh, 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 present day work, which brings us to the loud cry. Amen. So before we do that, let's ask that simple question for the night is, can faith save us? Can faith save you or me can faith save you or me think about it before you answer can faith save you or me can faith save you or me anyone i would just knowing that faith without works is dead I would say no, not a, not alone, not by itself. Is that all? Are you sure about that? Well, just knowing what the scriptures say, um, with faith without works is dead. Um, it is, a, and then there is also faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Who can faith say you? According to Hebrews 11 and 13, it says, they all died in faith, not, not having received the promise, but having seen them at far off and were Pursued of them and established them in comfort that they, they were strangers and I need to get my glasses. I know I'm trying to get there. Where you at? Oh, you're, you're reading it very well. Yeah. yeah. They're still, still running together. It says, These all die in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off and were. <laughs> persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on uh, on the earth. Oh that's true. Uh, uh, for for they that say for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out they might have had opportunities to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is a holy and heavenly 
Where, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for they, for He have prepared for them a city. Amen. So in thirteen, it tells you automatically that faith can't save. Cannot. Sir, is it cannot? Can't. Yeah, it cannot save. Right, right. And, and Michelle was right. I just wanted to see what she. Standing on what she believed, what she said. If the word of God said, thank you, brother, uh, brother, brother and sister Oaks and sister Michelle, because you know, we're gonna be tested, brother and sister, for what we believe. We're gonna be tried. Hey, uh, and, and what was the question again? Can faith save us? Can faith save you? Now, if you don't mind me asking, when you say can faith save us? What faith? Now I do know the faith of Jesus. No, but the faith that, that of was, Jesus. That was not that was not put on the internet though. That was not, that was not right. So you say so you but if it's not the faith of and the faith in Jesus, any other faith other than that can't save you at all. Right. And that, that's right. That's why I didn't add anything onto that. Because, because you know, people just People just believe. They say, oh, you got the Bible say, oh, you should believe in Jesus and you shall be saved. Don't the Bible say that? Amen. But, but we know that word believe me more than just, just believing because people teach that all you got to do is have faith. That's all you need. Nothing else. And, and so we know just faith Faith in the Bible acts. The Bible asks that question, can faith save him? And it answers the question. So, no. And, and y'all are right. Everyone is correct. So we need to believe, we need to just be standing on the word of God. Uh, you know, when you say faith without works is dead, stand on that. Stand on that, stand that on, on that only. Because we're going to be believed, we're going to be challenged for what we believe. And we brought before great men of the earth. They're going to pick, try to pick apart every bit of our faith. And uh, so therefore, brothers and sisters, we need to know why we believe, why we believe, and what we believe, what we believe. And be able to stand upon the word of God and not be moved. Amen. We need to know without a doubt that the seventh day is the Sabbath and that God did not change it and we will stand on it no matter the heaven may fall. Amen. Amen. Uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, now, you know, we always say the faith in Jesus and the faith of Jesus. What is the faith of Jesus? Brothers and sisters, he said, what is the faith of Jesus? Well, I always... Please leave your message for... Who is that? Sorry, brother and sister, Gloria Loretta had called in and she dropped off, so I was trying to pull her back on. Um, I always start with what is faith the faith what is faith in Jesus and then it's easier to kind of segue but we know in revel um and let's actually revelation 1412 I'm just going to quickly read it here is the patience of the saints here they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus so Faith in Jesus, we we know that we've talked in times past about um, the righteousness of Christ and his character and his life um, being um, perfect, his character being perfectly reproduced in us. Um, that's having faith in Jesus. The faith of Jesus um, in Revelation fourteen twelve, where it's where it reads, um, not only are we keeping the commandments of God, but but and the faith of Jesus, and that's basically um, spirit of prophecy. We know the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, and so from Genesis to Revelation, that is our. That's what we are to believe, and that's what we are to live by, and that that is the faith of Jesus. 
Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, yes, yes. Where, Brother Wayne? Now, the face of Jesus, the face of Jesus, I understand is the, is the faith that he exercised mm -hmm. Which is? While, he, while he was here in the flesh on this earth as, as one of us, as it were. Okay. And uh, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the faith that that that, that uh, he exercised. Right. Now, I got it's another statement here in um, the one general conference bulletin. I don't know what the uh, SLH means, but anyway, therefore God. Let's see. We know that we we cannot cleanse ourselves from our transgressions of God's law. Therefore, God. Talking about the Bible. And mercy provides the face of Jesus, which presents to our view the fountain open for uncleanness. And all those helps and means of grace that cluster around the death of the blessed and adorable Son of God, and by which the humble penitent can obtain strength to bring all the powers of his being in subjection to the law of God. That's the faith of Jesus. The, you know, it's just so many expressions of it. But the faith he had when he said, Father, forgive them. Well, they know not what they do. That's faith. And and that faith was given him by the, the, the Father and the Holy Spirit. Because he had he had uh, given up his his godly powers, as it were. Yeah. Is that, we know, is that more love is that more love than faith. They to forgive them for knowing that not what they do. Would there be more love than faith? Maxon. Oh, I don't know. When, when we get into these different uh, use of words, uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not able to, 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 to give a measure okay. on All those right. words. I don't, I don't have the, uh, what can I say? I just don't have the, the wherewithal right? at this point. Some, okay. Maybe some words I can. I'm just not able to measure those words. It right. comes with a, go ahead, come with a re uh, conclusion. Go ahead, Mark. No, I'm saying, go ahead, Mark. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, just saying, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm finished. I'm finished. Would it would it be something dealing with John three sixteen? It says what? God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world mm -hmm. to condemn the world, the world, but but that the world through, through Him, him might, be, might saved. be saved. Seventeen, sixteen, seventeen. John three. 16, 17. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he, and he can go further with even with 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten of the Son of God. So so that's the so the so the faith in Jesus is that what you said and what mm -hmm. and the faith of Jesus, what Brother Wayne was referring to Michelle. Was referring mm -hmm. to, but some similar to that is um, just simple that I've got from the spirit of prophecy, and I was thinking on it. Uh, and Brother Wayne said, Sheldon, faith in Jesus, faith of Jesus, believing that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and he died for our sins, rose again on the third day, sits on the right hand of God, and is seated in the most holy place for us, and will come back again to receive us, that we will be him, like you said, and jump. Three, but also in John 14, that where he is, we may be also faith in Jesus. Now, the faith of Jesus is, is I like to, it, when I read the Bible, the Spirit of Prophecy, it's captured in three words. And, and, and all these three words encompass Christ's whole life. This is ministry. We see that we need a faith that will endure hunger, weariness, and delay. Hunger, weariness, and delay. Now, when we look at Christ, hunger, weariness, and delay, when did Christ, when was Christ hungry? When he when he was in the wilderness, when he was accepted by the devil, and he was fasting for 40 days. When are we going to be hungry? When will we be hungry? In the, during the time of trouble. When the uh, and then he announced the Sunday law, mm -hmm. and we had to run to the woods. Yeah, 
That's right. So that's one. That's one. That's one of the faith that we need. All right. And, and another then, one would be when they say we can't buy or sell. Right. Mm -hmm. That's hunger. Okay. And then we. Uh, but then also, what the Bible tells us that what our bread and water will be sure, right? Uh -huh. Amen. Did not the angels come to Jesus after his fast and gave him and, and gave him food to strengthen him? Uh-huh. Amen. Right. So faith, they would endure hunger. We're in the, when will when will Christ weary? In the Garden of weary. Gethsemane. Garden of Gethsemane. When are we going to be in weariness? When we what? The time of trouble. Yep. That's right. And but did, did not, but 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 did but what brought Christ to weariness? Say it again. What brought Christ to the weariness period? What what did he, what brought him out of the what when we said what did he say? What one of the interesting things he said when he's praying to the Father? The Lord do what? Take this cup what from me? Amen. But but not my will, but who? Your will. Not will. Yeah. So are we not gonna be praying and agonizing the Lord? And all our sins and everything is nothing between me and you. That we're gonna be uh, uh, searching our souls and making sure all this is is all our sins that went before God. Now, hunger, weariness, and delay. When did Christ experience delay? When the ball was When was that? When he was on the cross. When just when he was just saying that part. When um when um God had to turn away from him. At the time that he was when he was being crucified. Because God turned away from because of what? Because he couldn't bear the sin. That's the sin right. when Jesus was taking on the, the, the sins. I don't know how to really say what I want no, to say. No, you're saying you're saying it. You're saying it. When Jesus took upon our sins. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Separating him from the Father, right? Right. So when will we experience delay? When the plagues are falling and, and we're await, waiting for Jesus' return. That's right. Because we know not when, right? And all we can see is the pain of death and agony. And we can't look past the grave because of the fact we don't know when Christ is going to come and rescue us or how death is going to come. So we need a faith that Christ had, the faith that endured weariness and hunger, weariness and delay. That's the faith. That's the faith. That's the faith of Jesus, right there. And everything everybody else says was correct. I'm just I put it in the most simple terms. That's all. And gave object lesson in the Bible. Go ahead, brother Tony. So we move to our Bible study. Yeah. Um, what would be the difference between the faith of Jesus, the faith in Jesus, versus imputed, imputed, and imparted? Well, we just discussed we just discussed the faith of and faith in, uh, of and in with, within itself describes of something versus in something, like you know, so exercising versus by uh, faith, and believing something that's faith of and faith in. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, what is imputed righteousness and part of righteousness? Well, we learned in a previous Bible study, imputed righteousness is, is justification by faith. Imparted righteousness is sanctification by, by faith as well. So imputed goes along with faith in Jesus, right? Amen. That's a justification, right? And imparted goes along with faith of because it gives us the power to overcome Weariness, hunger, hunger, weariness, and delay. Amen. Which is the Holy Spirit imparted to us to endure these things. We can't do them on our own, brothers and sisters. We cannot do these things on our own. We must have Jesus in our life and the Holy Spirit guide and lead us. Amen. Amen. And, and Brother MK, since you said that something just kind of resonated in my mind you know just that distinction of in versus of 
um, it, it almost kind of allows us to see more clearly even the distinction between your question, your original question, can faith alone save us? You know, you could, if you, if you continue that thought, it can, can, the, can faith in Jesus alone save us? No, we have to have the faith of Jesus. There was a previous study entitled, you must have both because uh, th that faith of Jesus is what's going to carry us through and praise God. I, I see that God's Holy Spirit really, really speaking um, because even Brother Wayne at the early part during the healthy living segment, drawing that parallel of how the Holy Spirit leads and guides us. But if we don't have the faith of Jesus, when we come up against obstacles, you know, we won't be able to endure and continue and, and overcome. And that's sanctification. Okay. All right. Any any more and, thoughts before we move on to our study? And, and it appears that one 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 faith uh is of humanity and the other is of, of divinity, of divine, divine faith. Now, belief in belief in Jesus appears to be a faith of, of man, faith of humanity, but the faith of Jesus, or Jesus' faith, rather. Of course, we're dealing with divine faith. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise God. All right, Brother, Brother Tony, any more comments before we move on? No, no, they're good. Thanks. Amen to all of us. And that's a, that's a whole, and I didn't want to go too far down that road because of the whole Bible study within itself. And I we could be all night with that. And there's a lot more we can say on that subject, on all everything just covered. Amen. Praise God. Brother and sister, thank you for those questions and comments. Let us pray. Our Father, once again, we come to you because we know you sits in heaven and looks low. Lord, remember us as just dust. And flesh as wind blows the way. Open our hearts and minds as we look at your word and study your word. Continue to allow the Holy Spirit to rest our attention that your people can be fed and only then can we be fed by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Holy Sabbath, brother and sister, once again. Holy Sabbath. Let us turn to Revelation 14, 9 11. 9 through 11. Praise God. Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Amen. We're going to look at the uh, third commandment. Third commandment. We're going to look at the third angel's message in conjunction with the loud cry, in conjunction with the service of the Sabbath, in conjunction with the lifestyle and activities of the remnant, and in conjunction with the, um, the present day work. The, the present day work. Then we'll close on a loud cry. So when we get to Revelation 14, 9 through 11, brothers and sisters, let me know and say amen. 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 All right. Okay. Revelation 14, 9 through 11 reads, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive mark in his forehead or his hand, the same should drink of the wine and wrath of God, which is poured, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of any nation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And in the presence and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever received the mark of the mark of his name. So, brothers and sisters, we see the third angel message. Why was God trying to bring and after 1844 when, he, when the, the three angel message was again to be proclaimed? What was God's purpose in bringing us out of that disappointment? What was God trying to lead us to, brothers and sisters? Well, we, what was God leading us to? Say again? We know the Millerites were, at that time, not keeping the Sabbath, the seventh-day Sabbath. And so um, in Revelation, it, it talks about prophesy. He told them to prophesy again. And they had to keep studying and keep believing. And God revealed to them what took place 
and it was leading them to the seventh day Sabbath. So when he said prophesied again, what, what was he saying? That they need to they need to go back and study and study. learn be, learn of him. Learn what? And every question there lies the answer. Spirit of prophecy. Yep. Continue to learn the prophecy. Go back and prophesy again. So therefore, brothers and sisters, they continue to study prophecy. And as they in the in that prophecy, what about the second coming of Christ, right? In the 2300 day prophecy, right? And so, like you said, God was trying to lead him to what? About the seven-day Sabbath. Because there was, and why was God trying to lead him to the to the a correct understanding of the seven-day Sabbath? Why was God trying to lead him to that way? That's the first angel's message. So let me ask this question. Go ahead, Brother Wayne. And and the the um the the eighteen forty four where where in William Miller preached in the Millerites of the sudden coming of Christ. But that that was a an invitation, although it was a test of God to weed out the the the, the foolish, as it were. But it was a test that, but moreover the, the, the call or more moreover the call was uh, for the people to enter in to the sanctuary and further more further to enter into the most holy place and at the end of the 2300 day prophecy and so the 2300 day prophecy is so connected to that midnight cry beginning that you really really can't separate it and uh so that that was the call that Jesus was coming to the most holy place to actually be able to see the 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 Sabbath commandment, not only and all other nine, and well, you know, and in 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 uh, their experience with the Lord there. So, and, and all and also at the same time, it's a dual. It's so that's a use all the time. It's a dual. Prophecy. It definitely pointed was pointing to the second coming of Christ. But he but, but in order for him to come the second time, it was a judgment hour message. It was a judgment message of judgment. And uh, that's that's all I have to say. Well I'm I'm gonna ask, ask this question and give you given an answer, but I was gonna ask it so it so we all can understand what you're saying. We understand what you're saying, but I'm going to put it in the context of a question. Because if, if I knew you was going to say what you're going to say, I would ask my question before you said that, and you would, you would answer the question. But you did answer the question without knowing the question I was going to ask. So why, brothers and sisters, think about what Brother Wayne said is, is answered that, that, to the question I'm asking, but I, but, but I want you to think on it. So why God didn't just give him the Sabbath on 1833? Why God just doesn't just tell them about the Sabbath in 1833. Brother Wayne answered. Y'all remember what Brother Wayne said? He was trying, what are you trying to do? Thoughts with a P. He's trying to what? Prove them. So God could have just told them about the seven day Sabbath, and, but he wanted to prove them by faith, see if they had a faith in his message and the faith in him. And was they will be, and were they going to endure the faith of Jesus as well? Because you remember, they took they, they they waited for Christ to come, amen. amen. They, they 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 uh, and they was waiting to the midnight hour, and also too, they uh, uh they they took a lot of ridicule, and uh and so, and so so therefore. Uh, uh, and the, and, they, and they all waited for Christ, Sister Deborah and Brother uh, Greg. I, I heard you, Brother uh, Tony. Sister Deborah and Brother Greg talked about they all, by faith, was pilgrims in a, in a strange land to seek a better country, sit it, make them build on God, but they never saw the promise. These brothers and sisters died by, without seeing Christ come. Mm -mm. 
But they believe that Christ was going to come any day. Amen. Brother Tony, we'll pause, we'll pause with that thought and let you go here, Brother Tony. I thought you had something to say. Yeah. Um, this may not make sense. So be fair with me. When you look at the Israelites when they came out of Egypt, mm -hmm. God gave them, you know, when you talk, you know, when, when they came from Egypt, God gave them manna and gave them instructions on the manna. When to pick it, when not to pick it. Yep. Or go search for it. And God said that it was, and that was before he gave the law. And he said that was a test. No, no, it was a test for them. It was a test for them that it, to see if they would obey. Mm. You, you saw what I'm saying? Yes. And the yes. Sabbath was in that. Yep. The Sabbath was in it. It was a test to see if they would obey. That's before they got to the promised land. Yep. We're in the last days now. Mm -hmm. In 1844, there was a movement, mm -hmm. a continuation of the Reformation. And the light that God gave was a very important light. Christ moving through the most holy place. The correct understanding of Christ moving into the most holy place. There was a group of people that accepted that truth. They accepted that truth before they got the Sabbath. Versus when they were when we were in Egypt or, or uh, the Israelites were in Egypt, the the test of the Sabbath came first. Now in the last days right here, since 1844, the test of the Sabbath came last. And I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, say again, uh, say the last part again. It's the, the, last, the test, test of the Sabbath, the Sabbath doctrine came after they accepted Christ moving into the holiest of holies. The test of the Sabbath came after he moved into the Holy Holy. Yeah, yeah, because the, the Sabbath came in 1846. Right, right. Okay. If, but, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you said but the Israel came in, what now? Are you making a But the Israelites, when they left Egypt, when they left Egypt, it was about the Sabbath. Let my people go. But Let we, my people but, go. Yeah, but you remember, you, you see now, I do, I, I've, I've drawn a parallel between everything that God gave the children of Israel out of Egypt. The same thing God gave us. Now, the first test God gave them, the first thing God gave them was what? What did what did the first thing God gave the children of Israel? What did God, what did Moses tell Pharaoh that God wanted the children to do? The very first thing. One in the rest. The first thing God gave us. Say again. It was the uh if I'm not mistaken, it was the uh Sabbath. so that they could rest. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Very well, he first gave us, huh? Come out to Pharaoh. God, Moses told Pharaoh that God said, "Let my people go, so they can do what? Rest, worship him. By what? To make a sacrifice. Yeah, that's right. And so, and the sacrifice got to do with what? The sanctuary service. The sacrifice. The sacrifice has to do with the sanctuary service because you the sacrifice was to make an atonement for that was sins, right? Amen. By, yeah. by faith, yeah. right? That's that's God said go to so they can make a sacrifice. So so therefore, but then the next thing, so so and God gave us the un correct understanding of what first? The sanctuary service. Yeah. Then he gave us the Sabbath. Then he gave the children of Israel after that, after that, then he gave them the Sabbath. So when you go back and look at that, you'll see where, because every time 
Any time the children of Israel moved, Abraham moved, Isaac moved, they always they made an altar and what? Sacrifice to God. The sacrifice mm -hmm. represents Jesus Christ and atonement, one with Christ, which is shedding of blood. Without shedding of blood, there would be no what? Now, when you say the sacrifice, now, when you say the sacrifice, um, and I understand what you're saying, I can, I can agree with that. That makes sense. But also, we know that the sacrifice was at the gates of Eden when they sinned. Yeah, but I'm talking about, we're talking so, about, we're talking about the children of Egypt versus in, in, in 1844. That's, we draw we, we, we on to that conclusion. We're talking that the parallel to God, the children of Israel, we're talking about from, the, from Egypt to, to the earthly Canaan and from 1844 to the heavenly Canaan. That's all we, that's the only parallel we draw on there. Okay. Yeah, I got you. I don't care. I don't yeah. care. So yeah, and yeah, and I, and I can agree with you. You know, I can I can see that point. I can agree you know, with that. If you we, we there's some more stuff in there. If we walk that thing on out, uh, uh, you'll see even a lot more. Everything God gave them, He gave us to the T in the same order, in the same order. So now, go ahead. And that's now, the whole, whole study we didn't say. Now, and, and I'm thinking about what you said. Now, when Moses went to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Did he go to Pharaoh or did he go to the children of Israel first? Well, I remember, remember he, he met the children of Israel first and told them that uh, you know, God, you know, they God was going to deliver. Well, David told God was going to be delivered in 400 years, 400 years. But when Moses came to uh, Moses, you know, Moses grew up in Egypt. So yeah. there wasn't strange to remember the, the two people that were scrolling, the two women that were scrolling against each other. And Moses killed the Egyptian, and they ran. So they knew Moses, but when God told Moses, uh, when, when God told Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, uh, then he, you know, the people have been crying to God, and so Moses went right to Pharaoh with Aaron. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, but but one day I would I would I would map out that parallel. That I, I, I got to my head that. Everything that God gave them, He gave to us after 1844. So God was trying to, and Brother Wayne said it. So God was trying to prove and and show them by faith, because God was trying to show them. Also, God gave them what the seven day Sabbath, right? Amen. Yeah. No. Because yeah. there was a breach. There was a breach in the law, right? And God and, and nobody can sir, No man can do God. No man can please God without what? Without faith. So, brother and sister, when you look at the experience of 1844, and now I want you, you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, open our hearts and minds so we may read and understand what I'm about to say in Jesus' name. Amen. So the experience of 1844, brother and sister, all the experience of 1844 and onwards, it covers every scripture in the Bible. That experience from from 1844, from that eight, from the 2300 day prophecy, prophecy into the end of time, cover every scripture in the Bible by precept or example. Please repeat that. From the hundred the 2300 day prophecy to the end of the world, entails by a precept and example every scripture in the Word of God. Praise God. Our experience, because when Christ, when God created us, Adam and Eve, we was to what? To inhabit this what? This earth. Wasn't that, wasn't this be, be no sin? Amen. So, after in, in twenty three hundred prophecies, it involves everything to do with the sanctuary service, from what? From Adam's sin to what? Christ down on the cross and going to the most holy place. Right? Amen. Only 2300 20, prophecy deals with the, the sacrificial service. Does it not? Amen. Does it not give us a correct understanding of the sanctuary service and the end of sin? It does. And does not, after the, does not, the sanctuary service also 
gives us a, a correct understanding of what's going to happen when sin is done away with and we're in the new heaven and new earth? It does. And are, are we not living at are we not living it out right now? Amen. No, when you say living it out, what you I don't know. We, we, we are actually practicing by faith the sanctuary service each and every day in our lives. By what? By, by by presenting our bodies to what? Romans 12, 1. A living sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to actually, when, if we're living, when Christ comes back, we're going to actually see the end of sin. We're going to actually see something that the sanctuary service does not show us, but 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 it's, well, it does not depict, but it shows us. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know what that is, right? And this. The light, in, the, in the sanctuary service, it, does, it has one part that has not been completed yet. You say there's one part that hasn't been completed. In the earthly, in the earthly sanctuary service, that one part that has, was never completed. The scapegoat. Gonna, but what about the scapegoat? It, the scapegoat has not, all the sins of the people have not been put on the scapegoat yet. And then what happened to the, what happened to the scapegoat? The strong man takes him into the wilderness. But what's going to happen to this? What, what, but in the sanctuary service, it doesn't show that the scapegoat was ever killed, right? Amen. But but we're going to see that what? That we're going to actually see the scapegoat being what? Destroyed. Praise God. By faith in the sanctuary service, we see that, but we're going to actually see it be played out. Yeah, call it God's praise that. Hold on, brother. Tony, hold your thought. Brother Wayne, go ahead. I brought this up before, but it helped me again. The um, this sanctuary service ex explains, you're right, explains that, that great plan of salvation so well. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 John 14, 1, I go and prepare a place for you. Is, is that not a description of the 2300-day prophecy and also the midnight cry, loud cry, and uh, what is it? What's the other? Uh, those, the, the, the loud cry, third angel message, and the, uh, I forget what the other one was. Uh, we see the... Yes, yes. Right about yes. face, midnight cry, and the loud cry. In verity. And, and what's the other one? Where, what's the, the loud cry and the. Uh, I, don't, the, the I just can't remember how we wrote it. Right about face, midnight cry, and the loud cry. Yes, and, and the last of rain. The last of rain? Mm -hmm. which, yes. Which brings, on, which brings on the loud cry. Right, right, right. Well, yes, you know, which, which uh, it works in concert, but it, it you know, it. It, 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 it gives more sound, as it were, to the, to the loud crowd. Right, you know? which I'm saying, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which we're gonna read. We, I, 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 I guess we may get to it tonight. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but not. The, but the question, the question dealing with, you know, I go and prepare a place for you. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. And, all, and, of, all that. And 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 and. Because all crisis. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, sir. All, all Christ's promises and threats are conditioned alike. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, that place that He prepared is something must transfer in us, transpose in us before we can before we can get to that place. Amen. And that was and that, brother Tony, going back to your statement, uh, 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 but when the children of Israel in Egypt to the earthly Canaan, uh, that was was God was trying to show them righteous by faith. That they can take Jericho, not Jericho, that they can take the Canaan because they went to Canaan and they saw what? Giants, big giant men, didn't they not? Amen. And that those giant yes. men is what in our what what is the parallel to those giants men in our like day? Mm. Matter of fact, let me show you something. When the children, and I should turn there. If y'all don't know it, I can turn there. When the 12 spies went to Canaan, right? And they all came back with, with, with a certain report, right? How many had a good report? How many had a bad report? Ten had a bad report. Two had a good one. Right. And who two had a good report was named who? 
Caleb and Joshua. Right. And that is a direct parallel, brothers and sisters. Anytime we say that we can't overcome sin, we saying that our sins are giants. Our sins are giants, and God cannot give us the victory by faith over our sins. Wow. Say that again, uh, if you don't mind. When the children of Israel, when the 12 children, when the 12 spies went to Canaan, and they saw those big giants and that big fruit and everything, and they came back and gave the, they can't, listen, brothers and sisters, look. <laughs> they came back and gave an accurate report. That was big giants, was they not? But mm -hmm. they didn't put the, they didn't put man faith, but with God faith. Humanity and divinity. Right. So they were saying that we can we can't overcome that, which was correct. We can't overcome our sins, which is correct. So when people say, I can't over, I can't quit sinning. Well, you know you can't quit sinning. But by Jesus Christ, by faith in Christ, we can overcome sin. So by the 12 spies, 10 of them said, we cannot overcome. We cannot keep the Ten Commandments. There's too many. We can't keep them. And those 10 spies said, we can't take the city of that giant. We're smaller in our eyesight. And the two says, and the two witnesses, the Old and New Testament, Joshua and Caleb. So yeah, you can. By faith in Christ, you can. Thank God. And so when we say that we cannot overcome sin and we're going to send in Christ come, thinking we're going to be saved, we're just giving the same report to the people. We are telling people, when we tell people you can't stop, you can't live perfect, you're still the same thing you're saying that you can't quit sinning. That's the same thing. You're saying a different way. Now, what's the difference between um, Christian perfection and not sinning. One and the same is in Jesus. Right. So when you say so when you say that one won't be sinning, who will know that they're not sinning? No one would no one thinks in their mind that they are not sinning. All persons who are living for Christ thinking that about serving Christ, they're not thinking about not sinning as so much that I'm counting their sins as though they've done some righteousness, but they are looking at how can I please my father without sin? Right. But right. First John 3, 9 says, and I love this verse. Matter of fact, I've been saying it all week. That, that whosoever born of God sin it not. For a seed remaining in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Now, when you break that thing down, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, that, that verse Whoso, that's just the first part of the verse is, is, a, is a colon. Whoso was believing God, whoso was born of God, sin it not. Brother, sister, I've been, I've been rehearsing that in my, my, I've been saying it all week, every morning, every day, all throughout the whole day. And you know what? I found to be that those words give power. Words bring life. Amen. And so I'm saying to myself, if I'm born of God, I should be committing sin. It don't say you will not sin. It's saying you will not commit sin. It doesn't say you won't ever sin or you will not sin. It's saying that you have the power to overcome sin by faith in Jesus because you're born in Christ. If you're born, if you're born of God, you sin or not because God what resides in you is not your will, but God's will acting out in your arms, legs, eyes, mouth, toes, feet, everything. God is controlling every part of your body, mind, and soul with your permission. That's being born of God. Bringing every thought into the beatings of Christ. And that was God was trying to get the children in 1844 to see. By faith in me, you can do this. But I must bring you to a point to see if you really love me. If you, you love me more than mother, father, sister, brother, pastor, digging, church member, and 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 the uh, other things of this world. Paul tell us, enjoy the, the the goods of this world, but don't abuse it. And when you say that, you know, sometimes I have a hard time understanding when uh, something like that is said that to see if you really love me. Um, knowing that God is died while we were yet sinners. 
Now, what you mean by that when you say to see if we really love him? Not, not that God knows. Not, not that God knows, but we need to know. God is not doing so, this for himself. God is doing for us. Okay, what did what did what did the God tell what did what did God tell Abraham when he first called when Abraham was Abraham? What did God tell Abraham? What did God and, and, and like liken that to the parallel of 1844? What did God tell Abraham? Go, go, leave your father's house and go. Like Sister Deborah and Brother uh, Greg was saying, God was telling him to go. And then God was proving Abram all the way, right? But then what was the, what was the final test God gave Abraham? He sacrificed his Amen. son. Uh, and what did he say after Abraham? What did, what did he say to Abraham after he, when, he, when he write? What did he say to Abraham? Now that I know yeah. what what yeah, but now his sister wife says that the test was for the the test was to reveal something to the devil. Also to prove to Abraham, but what yeah. did he tell Abraham though? Now, now, I, now I know. Now that I know you now, what? Love me. Yeah. You're not keeping anything from me. See, because mm -hmm. you remember Abraham had been told told Pharaoh and and uh and uh and remember, like I think it was that uh uh that that was his sister, not his wife. So he was afraid of getting dying, right? So God needed Abraham needed to be shown to himself to prove that that God knows. But we need to know whether we do. Do you really know if you love God or not? You don't really know sometime until God allows him. Listen, brothers and sisters, we all are gonna come to a point whether we know whether we're gonna love God. We need to be sure in our hearts and minds. That we love God without a doubt. And God doesn't do it for his benefit. God does it for our benefit because the devil is always trying to test us and try us or trying to attempt, tempt us, right? So God God's gonna allow certain things to come in our lives that we're not exercising faith to show him that we love him and to, to show ourselves that we love him. So he allows certain things to come our way so we can be fully convinced whether we can trust God or not. Or we can, or we do, do we really love God? It may be the husband left you, wife left you, job fired you, or the whole church kicked you out in, in John 16. Uh, it could be any of those things. But God wanted us, we need to be sure. Because sometimes we don't really understand and know whether we love God until we brought into straight places. And all the time, God has given us the strength to bring us through. Uh, you know, another thing I would say that um, is we're faced with it every day. And what yeah. I mean by that, what I mean by that is um, it takes courage to stand for the truth. It takes courage to oh. tell the truth. It takes courage. Right to, right to, now. When I'm, yes, it takes courage. And, and uh, because I'm just speaking on myself. Um, normally, if somebody's if somebody that I don't think a lot of, that I'm not, that uh, my relationship with them don't cost me anything, whether I tell the truth or whether I don't tell the truth, it don't cost me nothing. So I'm easily to tell the truth. Yes. But when I'm faced with something where it costs me something, if it costs me something, that's the test. When it costs me something, then it takes courage to stand for the truth. Now, and now, that, you know and what, now you know what you know what God may allow to happen to you? Or to any of us who has that who has that who has that, unless you hypothetically speaking. And for anyone, I mean, I won't say you, but for anyone who feels that way or believes that, you know, what, that it takes, you know, for the scenario you gave, God will allow everything, to, everything will be taken away from us. Every earthly support will be taken away from us to prove to, that we should love God and depend upon God. So. Well, the Bible and, talks about unless you receive the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy a sale. So Take anything it. that you're talking about is going to be taken away anyway. Right. But unless God's you see it. God's trying to get the stuff put in. He's trying to get the stuff put in. And 
so so what I'm saying is that it's it we, we're faced with it every day. Right. Yeah, if but if it costs us something, if it costs us something, then we're tempted to do whatever we need to do to uh keep or to whatever the case is. And um and it's justified. You can yeah, justify you know, it. But you, know, like, but you call it like a little white lie. Right. But you know though, brother uh Tony, as we as we move on to the in the study, but you know, some of us are rooted in the ground in what we believe. And the devil knows it. And the devil gonna try to get something else. He might get something on something that he might gonna try to get something that's dear. And, and, and close to each one of us to try to get us moved off of our faith. It could be job, family, relationships, church, it could be anything. The devil always trying to look for a toho to, where he can have a place in our heart. And, and we have to guard our heart with the word of God. And we got we have to, Paul, we have to be as though we're not. We cannot be so touched in anything in this world that it let us come between us and God. And that's what 1844 was about. They could not even, even they believed and they thought that everything they understood was true. But when it didn't come to pass, the ones who didn't believe went back. The ones who didn't have faith doubted and went back. And the ones who really didn't want to know and didn't care about knowing, they wanted an excuse to go back. But there were some, regardless of ridicule, Regardless of being shamed, regardless of being people said, I told you Jesus wasn't come, regardless of, 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 of them knowing that they was wrong and not understanding how they have proclaimed the message of Jesus as though he's coming. They still wasn't deterred. They still pressed on. They still trust in Jesus. They still trust in the word. And they said, Lord, it's not us that was right. It's your word that's right. We had a misunderstanding of your word. We need to go back and look at it again. Go ahead, sister. And um, the Holy Spirit brought back to my remembrance that word courage. I had, it, it came up some time ago and I had just been reading about that word. And, um, and, and it actually wasn't courage, excuse me, it was curiosity. And um, I was asking, you know, because there are some words that are not biblical words, but if we stick to what the Bible says, we'll, we're, that's our safeguard. And um, the answer that I was given was, and I'm not saying that courage and curiosity are the same, but what I am saying is, I don't know if you can find either one in the Bible, but humility. Oh, yeah, courage in the Bible. Courage in the Bible. Yeah. yeah, but humility, I know um, the Bible speaks of as that causes us to see our um, need. And, and when we see our need, we look to Jesus. And when we look to Jesus, we're safe and he, and he will um, he will strengthen us and he will give us what we need to endure and overcome like we've been talking about. So um, I, I kind of prefer to use that word to help me stay, you know, dead center on the focus at keeping my focus on him because sometimes courage can almost imply something from our ourselves but humility there's none of us we're we're just looking to Jesus okay all right so brother I'm gonna read us something about what God was trying to show them about the Sabbath as we move on to the study coming out of six testimonies it says then we're going to move into it. Uh, before the end, we're going to move. Well, we've got quite a ways to go. As the Sabbath was the sign that distinguished Israel when they came out of Egypt to enter the earthly Canaan, 
So it is now the sign that distinguishes God's people as they come up from the world to enter to the heavenly rest. The Sabbath is a sign of the relationship existing between God and his people, a sign that they under his law is distinguished between his law subject and transgressors. Six Testimonies, page 349, paragraph three. From the pillar of cloud, Christ declared concerning the Sabbath, early my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and your between me and you throughout your generation, that ye may know that I'm the Lord that does sanctify you. Exodus 13, the Exodus 31, 13. The Sabbath, the Sabbath given to the world as a sign of God as created is also the sign of him as the sanctifier. The power that created all things is the power that recreates the soul in his own likeness. To those who keep holy the Sabbath, the Sabbath day, it is a sign of sanctification. True sanctification is harmony with God, oneness with him in character. It is as received through obedience to those principles that are the transcript of his character. And the Sabbath is a sign of obedience. He who from the heart, who he who from the heart obeys the fourth commandment will obey the whole law. He is sanctified through obedience. Six testimonies, page 350, paragraph one. Amen. Let me read this. Amen. The lifestyle and activities of the remedy. As the, as the, as the children, as the people in 1844 was moving on from the great disappointment and their lifestyles reflect what they need, need to be. What our lifestyles, what it should reflect, what it should be. Until, because they thought they don't see Christ coming that day. We think the same thing. So what should be our lifestyle? Lifestyle and activities of the remnant. A spirit of service and self-sacrifice coming from last day events in Acts of the Apostles. Page 76, paragraph one, last day events. Long has God waited for the spirit of service to take position of the whole church, possession of the whole church, so that everyone shall be working for him according to his ability. When the members of the church of God do their appointed work in the needed fields at home and abroad, in fulfillment of the gospel commission, the whole world will soon be warned and the Lord Jesus will return to the earth with power and great glory. Acts of the Apostles, page 111, 1911, last day events, page 75, paragraph one. Everywhere there is a tendency to substitute the work of organization for individual efforts. Human wisdom tends to consolidation, to centralization, to the building up of great churches and institutions. Wow, listen to this. Let me read that again. You can go back. Everywhere there is a tendency to substitute the work of organizations for individual efforts. Human wisdom tends to consolidation, to centralization, to the building up of great churches and institutions. Multitudes lead to institutions and organizations and work of benevolence. They excuse themselves from contact with the world and their heart grows cold. They become self-absorbed and unimpressible. Love for God and man dies out of the soul. That's the events, page 75, paragraph two. Christ commits to his followers an individual work, a work that cannot be done by proxy. Ministry to the sick and the poor, the giving of the gospel to the lost is not to be left to communities, to committees or organized charities. Individual responsibility, individual effort, personal sacrifice is the requirement of the gospel. The Ministry of Healing, page 147, 1905, last day event, 76, paragraph one. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now listen to this. Then we're going to move to Revelation 18. Then we're going to talk, look at the loud cry in conjunction with the third angel message. A present day work. A what? A present day work. Present day work. More and more, as the days go by, it is becoming apparent that God's judgments are in the world. And fire and flood and earthquake, he has warned the inhabitants of the earth of his near approach. The time is near when the great crisis in the history of the world will have come, where every movement in the government of God will be watched with intense and interest and inexpressible apprehension. In quick succession, the judgment of God will follow one another. Fire and flood and earthquake with war and bloodshed. Are we seeing it now, brothers and sisters? <laughs> 
just yesterday there was another uh, 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 train ran up the track in Alabama. Oh, that the people might know the time of their visitation. There are many who have not yet heard the test of truth for this time. There are many with whom the Spirit of God is striving. The time of God's destructive judgment is the time of mercy for those who have had no opportunity to learn what is true. Tenderly will the Lord look upon them. His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still stretched out to save, while the door is closed to those who would occupy, who would not enter. Oh, listen to this. Let me read that again. His hand is still out stretched to out. Let me see. Let me stop. His hand is still stretched out to save, while the door is closed to those who would not enter. Nine testimony, nine testimony, ninety-seven, paragraph two. Why is what is God saying? He said his door of mercy is open, right? But it's closed to those who would not enter. Who would not? Who is that? Who now? Who is he talking about? The ones that's going to be lost. Be more specific. Satan and his wicked, Satan and his angels and his people. No, ma'am. Not yet. Not yet. Not, oh, I'm on a different term, man. Yeah, you're too, you, you too far down the road. Come back a little bit. Okay. You're the I'm, end. I'm, those who don't back. keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Say again. Those who don't keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Uh, no, I, I, no, I, I don't think you know what you're saying. Be more specific. There's another word that you put in there. Go, Brother Wayne. Repeat the question again, please. Brother Wayne, before he speak, let him repeat the question again. Uh, it's, this is, this is, says here. Tenderly would the Lord look upon them. His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is stretched out still to save, while the door is closed to those who would not enter. Who are those? Who is the door? Who is, it, who is those who would not enter? Matter of fact, that, that, that reminds me. Of, oh, go ahead. go ahead, brother. Sorry. Is that not the uh, the hour eighteen forty four midnight cry, where the Lord went from the holy place to the most holy place and. And then the doors, doors, doors still shut, as it were, to the holy place. So, uh, and, uh, and of course, that, that, that's uh, Psalm, Psalm 91 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the, under the shadow of the Almighty. And uh, so that's, that's what that did in, in Revelation chapter 3, you know, with the Church of Philadelphia. But, you know, with, with, with the brethren, uh, would, would not enter into the the most holy place. Yeah, but it, it has a dual application, brother. That's a good one. Has a dual application. And dual application. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a scripture. And you gonna, you know, y'all gonna get there in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why are you getting that scripture? I just want to read one text here. Please, one, please. One, 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 one statement. It's found in the book called Messiah in His Sanctuary. Messiah in His Sanctuary, F. C. Gilbert, and uh, it says here regarding the Sabbath. It says Seventh Day Adventists keep the Sabbath because they have repudiated every form of error, including the day devoted to the worship of the sun. In, in, in other words, the Sabbath Sabbath worship or Sabbath keeping is a sign that that uh, we have been made free from sin during that week, as it were. That's what it's a sign of. It's a sign of a completed work of Christ. And that's during that week. And, and even in the end, the Sabbath is a sign of Christ's completed work in humanity. His image being reproduced in us. Mm -hmm. Then we can rest for a thousand years, as it were. Keep the Sabbath. Praise God. Uh, Seventh day Adventists keep the Sabbath because they have repudiated every form of sin. That, 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 that's, that, I'm telling you, that's a high calling. 
to be a seventh day heaven. And I praise God for that high calling because he's able to give us power to do it. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us spotless, as it were, wholly unblameable for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Amen. Okay. I'm looking for this one text, and all you know it, but I want to find it. Anybody got anybody got any more comments while I'm, while I'm looking for this text? Because I'm I'm gonna show you what that's talking about is that 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 right there. I'm gonna. Show. I still maintain that uh, in in uh, Ephesians chapter one, verse twenty one, the Bible says, "Let us therefore keep ourselves from unholy passion, which is unholiness, and let us not indulge ourselves with wine, which is debauchery, but let us with thanksgiving." Yes. Yeah. Which, which, which is to put away sin. That's that's why we can't accept that place. And we can't be taking that place unless we're without sin. Amen. Amen. So you're right. I'm just going to quote the scripture. I know we know it and somebody may know where it is. I'm looking for it. I'm trying to see how it's worded. Let me see. It says, uh, he talked about, he told the Pharisees, let me see, I think I may be coming up on it. Uh, okay, it goes, um, do, 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 do. I think it's the compass land and see. Let me see the compass. Let me see the compass land and see. What kind of land you say? Repeat that. I think it's the compass land and see. Let me see compass land and see. 2315. Yes, yeah, that, but it also, what I'm, the one I'm looking for is that you would not go in, nor would you suffer them to enter to go in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I know it's in this, I know it's in this, nor would you suffer them to go in. Hey, all right, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. But all right, I'm going to read this, I'm going to read this again, and I'm going to go to, let's go to Matthew 23, 13. I will not forget it no more. All right. All right. Go to Matthew 23, 13, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to read this to you again. All right. Can y'all can everybody hear me? Amen. Hey, okay. The time of God destructive judgment is the time of mercy for those who have had no opportunity to learn what is true. So we know that's talking about the end time, right? Amen. The time of God, the time of God destructive judgment is the time of mercy for those who have had no opportunity to learn what is true. Okay. God destructive judgment is the last plague, right? Amen. Tenderly will the Lord look upon them. His heart, is, his heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still stretched out to save, while the door is closed to those who will not enter. All right, now ask this question again. Who is it talking about that those who not, the door is closed to those who will not enter? I'll give you another opportunity to answer this question. Let's go to Matthew 23, 13. Those in Babylon. Nope. Let's go to Matthew 20. Everybody in Matthew 23, 13 say amen. 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 All right. Sister, Sister Boy, you, you guys are there? Yes, sir. All right. It says, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you shut up the what? Kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. Right. You shut up the kingdom of heaven. Against what? Men. Against men, right? Yes, men. For you neither will what? Go in. Go in yourselves. Neither what? Suffer ye them yeah. are entering to go in. Go in. All right, now I ask you a question. Who is God talking about over here? What I just read. Who is God talking about over here now? Hypocrites. Scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. All right, so who's God? Now I'm going to read this story again. I'm going to read this, this again. His heart is, is his heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still outstretched out to save, while the door is closed to those who will not enter. Now, who is he talking about? 
Sunday issue? Yes. Is that what you're trying to yeah, but, to? but who is he talking about though? What what particular people are you talking about? The um, Seventh day Adventists in apostasy. Yep. Yeah. The probation closed on it. Yes, that's 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 the word because the hypocrite, the Pharisees would not what accept the truth. And they don't want anybody else to go in. And so here Christ is saying the door is open to those who do not know, but those who do not who, who chose not to go in, the door is closed to them. But, but judgment first begins on the house of what? God. Brothers, I got some. I got another thing. I got got the close of probation. I cannot wait to read. I don't know when I'm going to read it, but I cannot wait to read it. So he said, "While the door is closed to those who are not going." In. So in other words, when the when the loud cry comes, we're going to get the loud cry in a minute. When we read eighteen one through four, then we're going to read spirit of prophecy loud cry. So the, the the those who did not know the truth, the Sabbath, um, the Sabbath, go ahead. Um, what that relating to um Revelation 14 verse um, um nine part of part of the three angels message in talking about the beast. Yeah in conjunction with Revelation 18 1 through 4 which we had it that way in a minute. As soon as I read this next paragraph we're gonna read Revelation 18 4 then we're gonna go to spirit process. Yeah we had it that way. So you see what he says can someone read uh, Matthew 23, 13 again? Yes, it says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Now, hold on. Who controls heaven, God or men? God. So why is God telling the Pharisee you shut up heaven to men? Why, what is he talking about? That should have been a question for tomorrow. Who's he talking about? What is he talking about? I mean, what is he talking about? They're leading them the wrong way. And, so, and how, how are they leading the wrong way, brother? brother uh, 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 Greg. Greg, how are they leading them the wrong way? How are they doing it? They're telling them what they want them to know but not, not what the word says so they are not preaching present truth that christ is the messiah in our day we're not preaching present truth that you can live without sin and the seven day sabbath is the seven day sabbath and god's going to put away sin and we're not preaching the three angels message in the mark of the beast that's why we're shutting up heaven against men because of that because we are not giving them the truth the key what did god tell peter i give you the key of what the kingdom what to open up the heaven and work anything you open, uh, bind in heaven be bind in heaven anything you lose in heaven be loose in other words in other words i give you the key for, to give the people the key of what the key of life to open up what the door into heaven you have the keys of life peter your word the, your words you speak is the keys of life so that when when, it, when we don't teach people the three angels message and present truth and mark of the beast and antichrist we're not we're shutting up heaven against them and they ain't and they ain't going in and do nor do they want the people to go in. But God said, because of his mercy, that those who don't know, and the, when the Sabbath law is, is proclaimed and the Son of Law is proclaimed, and everyone everyone would have known clearly, but those who have known this truth, who have had it, guess what? The door of mercy is shut for them. Have mercy, Jesus. So now you see why it's important for us to preach this message? Yes. And deliver it by broad grace? All right. Use the word. Say again, Brother Wayne. Use the word delivered. And that's what the Sabbath message is. It's a message of deliverance of the people of God. Yep. The whosoever will. It's a message of deliverance. And that's what these the brothers who preach Sunday, they're telling the people, you don't have to keep the Sabbath. You don't have to do it. And they, they won't enter in the, into it themselves, into Christ, as it were. The Sabbath is the whole key, whole key to everything. It's the, it's the foundation of the creation of God, as it were. He made, he made it the last day. Everything else, everything rests 
on the Sabbath. Because the Lord, I got everything. Wow, that's, nope. a, that's a pun, Brother Wayne. It's a, That's a double meaning. Yep, deliverance. The double meaning. And those who would not preach our message doing the same thing they're doing. So, when we're talking, what I'm hearing, when you talk about Sabbath, yes, sir, it's more than I know it's a day that was set aside, but I hear Jesus. Well, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, I'm telling you that the door of mercy is closed for those who will not do it. He's going to tell you yeah. this, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, it's Jesus, yeah. So, you can't, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. I'm sorry, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, you know, uh, I know the Sabbath is a day set aside for creation, but it, I'm I understand that you can't separate it from Jesus. Amen. You're both. You can't separate the two. No. Right. So you know you can't separate when I when I hear the Sabbath. And everything I hear about the Sabbath, you can't separate Jesus. And I think that's what the 1888 most precious message was about, was that, hey, you can preach the law, but it's, it's void Jesus. And anytime you can define the Sabbath and you see Jesus in it, then you're presenting righteousness by faith and, and and on the token i see him and on the same token is you can't put him i say you know i'm talking about you personally but we cannot present jesus and sunday together either no you so, can't preach jesus and sunday together you know so therefore therefore when see when we say when you we say that we must keep the sabbath holy we're not saying this we're we're just we we are prophets, and we don't have the gifts of prophecy, but we're prophets, prophesying what Jesus says is going to come, and and telling them what Jesus says, that's going to happen to them, and whosoever for those who for those who did not know about the Sabbath, who did not accept the Sabbath, do not understand it because ministers or they've been trained into sin by Satan, the spirit of prophecy say the Bible teaches, they will have a, if they're still living. They would have an opportunity to clear to see clearly God's law versus man law would be no doubt. But those who know, like you and I, you know, and we don't accept this truth, and all we want to teach is love and Jesus and not and not the commandments of God and the spirit of prophecy, we're gonna be lost. Simple as that. That's why he that's why she, she, say that that's why I read Matthew 23, 23, Matthew 23, 13, I mean, that the door that they will not go in. The Pharisees knew the truth. They knew the law. They knew. They had no excuse not to know. It because the Spirit of Prophet says in the Zion of Ages, it because of that, what, what did she say? Criminal indifference. Criminal indifference. Not unwillful indifference. Criminal indifference. Criminal indifference means that you willfully did not want to know, nor did you do anything you avail yourself to know. Nor would you want to teach anyone else to know what the word of God should would say and should say, or don't say. And then we're not teaching the message at this time. So the law cannot be taught without love. Jesus cannot, when we talk about the law, we talk about Jesus. When we talk about Jesus, we talk about the law. When we talk about the law, we talk about the love of Christ. When we talk about the love of Christ, we talk about the keeping the commandments of guys, Christ. When we talk about keeping the commandments of Christ and the love of Christ and the law, we talk about the character of God. So it's one and the same. So when we teach that, the person who don't want to accept the message as it is in Jesus will always find an excuse, are you not standing in love? Are you not teaching love? Well, te to teach Jesus to teach love. Paul say, some teach Christ out of hate, not, not out of hate, some teach Christ out of offense, some teach Christ out of dust, but Christ is being preached. But however, what he's saying is, but but it's only, I only know it. Only thing I know, and only thing I want to know, Paul, Paul says, is Christ and Christ crucified. Where, Brother Wayne? Yes, he is. I, 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 think, I don't think she got anything to say. 
she just came through, but maybe she's having difficulty. Michelle. I, yeah, I hear you all now. I, I I just was saying you were frozen earlier. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Michelle. You got anything to say? No. Oh, you had your hand raised. Oh, oh, yes. Earlier, yes. I was just going to say in terms of um, faith, righteousness, or excuse me, the comment was made about the seventh day Sabbath. Um, and I thought about it being synonymous with um, when it comes to this distinction between the faith in faith in Jesus and the faith of Jesus. Um, the seventh day Sabbath is synonymous. It just based on our earlier discussion, the seventh day Sabbath is synonymous with the faith of Jesus, where we're walking out our belief. And that's faith. Right, that's, she said that's right about faith. Romans 14, 12. Right, which is what we're doing something. Um, whereas faith in Jesus is trust and believe. So it's a, it's a you know, it's, we're basically, our arms are wide open. But I, right. I, I only brought that up because the seventh day Sabbath we, it's it's almost like it's being implied that 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 Jesus, faith in Jesus and faith of Jesus don't go together. In other words, seventh day Sabbath doesn't go along with righteousness by faith, or that the two messages don't go together. But it's they they they're actually it's a perfect marriage. Well, she says she said that the righteousness by faith is Revelation fourteen twelve. Here to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus is lived out. Amen. It's, is, is one and the same. You, can, you can keep the commandments of God. To keep means to do something with it. Don't mean just to hold. Is to is to is the action. The word keep is an action word. And to in the, in the faith of Christ in itself is a, is a is a doer is a doer of the law. So the faith you know the faith in Christ and the faith of Jesus uh, is 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 like and so. But when people say I rather really see a sermon and hear one, then they're they're not they're not that's not biblical. That's, Amen. That's because we profess what we believe and then we live what we profess. That's the faith in Jesus, the faith of Jesus. The two go hand in hand. Right. Brother, Brother Wayne. True, true Sabbath keeping is not about a, a day merely. No. Yes. But of a life of dedication and holiness to God. And Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, is the is Sabbath message, because that's what it's all about. It's about those, as was mentioned earlier in the study about Joshua and Caleb. They are, they understood the Sabbath message that we are well able to do exceeding, even even as He is. Well, He's able to do He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. But, the, but this, the, it's not about a day merely. And that's what Noah preached. It wasn't, that was his name, rest. Mm -hmm. Sabbath. But he, but he, 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 he didn't preach about, about works, but yet he worked. Every nail that, that he nailed in the heart was, was a message. And that, that's righteousness by faith, not by, not by works. The same message. It's not the message. Yeah. That's the name of God. Right. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Right. Christ in other words, we keep his commandments because of the love of God, not because of our love. That's, that's know. But the love of God is the love that we need. Amen. Not our love. Amen. You know, can I say something if you finish, brother one? You know, um, I don't mean, uh, um, you know, we, we talk about the Sabbath, and I've heard a lot of people talk about the Sabbath, and I've heard people rightfully so present the Sabbath, but they present the Sabbath without Jesus. And one thing that I, um, 
Um, um, one thing that I've hear here on these studies, and in particular from Brother Wayne, is the fact when he talks about the Sabbath, you can't help but to see Jesus. Right. And, 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 and that is the crutch of the matter right there. When we present the Sabbath rather than a debate of this is right and wrong uh, is right but is void something like Sister White said we preach the law until like the, the hill of Barbella mm -hmm. and when and again like I said when I hear the Sabbath upon this study and again I say especially Brother Wayne You can again. I say it again. You can't help but to see Jesus. Right. So, but now when you when you look at that, so when you said you heard people preach the Sabbath, how can a person preach the Sabbath without Jesus? It's impossible. Well, well, you, you know, you preach the Sabbath, and we preach the Sabbath uh, traditionally as, hey, God created the seventh okay. day. He sanctified it. All that is true. But, but you don't see Jesus. Well, I'll put it like this. It was Jesus? this uh it, it was this pastor, it's this chaplain. He was at Broad River. He was uh, I think I might have shared the story a while back. He was a uh chaplain, he's the head chaplain at one of the institutes. Very hard, strict guy as far as had been his faith. We couldn't we could not talk about revelation. Couldn't talk where well, we couldn't teach Revelation or Daniel. Everybody else could, but we could. Now, very, very, very hard. One day he had a uh, somebody come out and speak on a Sunday. You know, at at the uh, you know they get together on Sunday and all that kind of stuff. And the chapel was all you know in the chapel, in the chapel, and the speaker could not make it because he got sick. So when the chaplain got up to go speak, and this is the testimony from some of the guys that was in the study. When the chaplain got up to deliver his message, it wasn't a message. It was a more of a testimony and a confession. And it was, he's, you know, and I asked him about it. He said he's a, he's a scholar of Greek and Hebrew. He know how to read it. He know understand it. He went through all the schools. He said, and this is what he shared with the congregation. He said, but I was wrong. I was taught wrong. I can read Greek and I can read Hebrew, but I never saw Jesus in the Sabbath. And I saw it in the book of Genesis. So from that confession from this chaplain that was such a man that everybody that was in the, that was Adventist in that class felt like he was kind of against all of us or uh, them to hear that confession come from his mouth and he also outlined he stopped eating unclean meats all because of the fact he saw Jesus in the Sabbath. He saw Jesus in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Okay. And I, you know, and so what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is it, it makes a big difference when folks can see Jesus in the Sabbath. They can see it. And again, you, some might say, well, how can you not see it? And you talk about the Sabbath because he created, but a lot of people don't even see Jesus in the beginning. No, yeah, 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 but Michelle, go ahead and then I'm gonna come in. No, I one thing too that I always think about, um, and I'm reminded of quite often whenever I am in these settings and also in coming in in one-on-one -on -one settings ministering to people one-on-one -on -one, 
I'm, I'm constantly reminded that Satan hates the Sabbath. And so any, any time I hear someone that is, doesn't, does, has a problem with the Sabbath, what I mean by that is proclaiming it and, and just saying it, you know, um, I all I automatically think of I rem, I'm reminded of the fact that Satan how much Satan hates it. So what what we all have to be careful of, I believe, is that we don't we need both. We must have both. Um, and there's from the and when I say both, I'm meaning Jesus is the foundation of of all things. Um, but the two go hand in hand and. It, if we know that the breach is the seventh day Sabbath and that's, that's what people have forgotten or are choosing not to follow because of decept self-deception and, and everything else, the devil would have us to not say anything about it. He, he would love that. You know, in fact, that's what a lot of churches are doing is, talking only about Jesus from the standpoint of precious truth. I dare not say that Jesus is not um, enough, but what I mean is we've got a um, present truth cuts like a knife and it doesn't leave anybody room to wiggle and get out of things. It, it, it's almost like you trap some, you back a person into a corner they have to make, they have to take an action. They have to do something. That's why it's called present truth. Precious truth, people are comfortable. Everybody's happy. Everybody feels good, but nobody's making changes so we can make it out of this world alive. You know, you know what, uh, thank you, sister and brother, uh, uh, brother Wayne and brother Tony for those words. But you know, brother and sister, you look at John 5.39. Y'all, anybody know what John 5.39 says? It says, search the scriptures in them, in them you think you have eternal life. Later, just testify me. John, Jesus says that. John 5.39. Search the scriptures in them you, you think you have eternal life. They just testify me. So, now, how many times have you guys heard me talk about tithes and offerings? Very, very, very little, very little. I, brother, this is a, some things I expect you to know. Amen. So, I mean, if I got to tell you, if I if I teach any, the, the, you know, y'all know, do y'all know what doc, anybody know what doctrines are? Do y'all know what doctrines are? Amen. Doctrines is it's, it's the principles of Jesus. Anytime we preach anything from the word of God, we preach in Jesus. Anytime, anything. Whether we say the word Jesus or not, we preach in Jesus. We teach in Jesus. And 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 when the gospel comes in, that brother and sister, when 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 Jesus talked to the Pharisees, he talked different to the Pharisees than he did to the what? To the disciples. Amen. So uh, we, when you go out to, the, to teach people who don't know the word of God, you're going to talk to them different than you talk to me, who know, who know the truth. How many, how, many, how many brothers and sisters that have been in seven events for many years that we don't know the, we don't know the love of Christ? If we don't know the love of Christ, if we don't know that the love of Christ by now, we're in a bad condition. If we're seven minutes, you don't know the love of Christ, you know lost condition. And brother, brother MK, to your point, I just thought about if we, if if any one of us on this call or on this um, Zoom session started a new job, and I know we're all out of you know of age in the sense out we've been out of elementary school for decades. Um, and if we started a job and the first day they, they taught us the ABCs, we would, we would walk out and laugh. And it's, it's kind of, to me, it's, it, it's kind of like that 
in this from the standpoint that when I think of present precious truth, I, you can almost liken because it's it's needed, it's needful, but that's the foundation. We should all we should all have that down. God is a strong meat is what we need and what the but, world needs. But also too, we that's why God, that's why we spirit prophets and Bible teaches us that we all should keep our individuality. Because you're gonna bring some out that I'm not gonna bring out. Somebody else is gonna bring some out that I'm that, that I'm not gonna bring out. I'm gonna bring some out somebody else not gonna bring out. That's why iron sharp is iron. We all, and that's why we all look, we all not the head, we all not the arm, we all not the eyes. We all have different, we all have members of, the, of one body. And that's why one would bring something out, another bring something out. And that's what the message is about. And that we speak the same thing, which is present truth. And 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 uh and and so therefore uh what what many of our churches have gone to is shown that they preach more of a less offending people than Amen. to turn the gospel and telling people that we need to put away sin and that Jesus Christ can give you power to overcome sin. When you say that, if you say you need to put away sin and don't tell them that Jesus Christ can give you the power to put away sin, you'll fail the people. You'll fail yourself. If you say, if you say that you, know, you need to keep the law of God only by faith in Christ, that's what it means. That, so, so as we look at the loud cry message, and as the Spirit of Prophecy tell us about the mercy of God, she say, the mercy of God is shown in his long forbearance. He is holding back his judgment, waiting for the message of warning to be sounded to all. What does it say? The mercy of God is shown in his long forbearance. He is holding back his judgment, waiting for the message of warning to be sounded to all. If our people will feel as they should, responsibility resting upon them to give the last message of mercy to the world, what a wonderful work will be done. Behold the cities and their need of the gospel. The need of earnest labor among the multitudes of the cities has been kept before me for many, for more than 20 years. Who are carrying a burden for the large cities? A few have felt the burden, but in comparison with the great need and the many opportunities, but little attention has been given to this work. Nine testimonies, page 97, paragraph four. So brothers and sisters, let us turn to Revelation 18, one through four. Talk about the loud, the, the three angels message. Let's talk about the loud cry. Then we'll read something about the loud cry and we'll close up. Revelation 18, one through four. You know, brothers and sisters, as we turn it down, say amen. You know, even 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 in the judgments, even in the plagues, there's there's love. Even even in the plagues of falling, there's love. Amen. In the judgments in the land, there's love. And the world's gonna think that God hates them. The world's gonna think that God hates them. The world gonna say because us, the world gonna be saved because we did not love Sunday enough. That's why God judgments in the land. They're going to accuse us of not loving Jesus. They're going to accuse of us of being lawbreakers. They're going to accuse us of us being insurrectionists. And they're going, to, they're going to accuse us of being not peacemakers, but peacebreakers. Revelation 18, 1 through 4 says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the greatest fallen is fallen, and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich to the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partake with her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins are reached unto heaven, and God have remembered her iniquities. Brother, so what is God telling us here in this last message of warning to the world in conjunction with the third angel message? What is God sharing with us? We need to let people know to come out of Babylon. And we know that um, 
when the national Sunday law is passed, that's that's when her sins will reach unto heaven. When man tries to take um, stand in the place that only God can stand, and and literally tries to change thinks to change God's law. Yes, listen to what she says. Early writings, a loud cry. I saw the angels hearing to and fro in heaven, descending to the earth, and again ascending to heaven, preparing for the fulfillment of some important event. Then I saw another mighty angel commissioned to descend to the earth, to unite with the voice of the third angel and give power and force to this message, to his message. Great power and glory was imparted to the angel as he descended. The earth was lightened with his glory. The light which attended this angel penetrated everywhere. He cried mightily with a strong voice, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cave of every unclean and hateful bird. Did we just not read that? The message of the fall of Babylon as given by the second angel is repeated with the additional mention of the corruption which have been entering the churches since 1844. The work of this angel comes in at the right time to join in the last great work of the third angel's message as it swells to a loud cry. And the people of God are thus prepared to stand in the hour of temptation, which they are soon to meet. I saw a great light resting upon them, and they united, and they united to fiercely proclaim the third angel's message. Early writing 277, paragraph one. Angels were sent to aid the mighty angel from heaven. And I heard voices which seemed to sound everywhere. Come out of her, my people, that you be partake, not partake of her sins, and that you receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God have remembered her iniquities. This message seemed to be in addition to the third angel message. He joined in at the midnight cry. Let me, let me read it again. This message seemed to be in addition to the third angel message. Joining at the midnight cry joined the second angel message in 1844. The glory of God rested upon the patient, waiting saints, and they fiercely gave the last solemn morning, proclaiming the fall of Babylon and the calling upon, the, this, upon God's people to come out of her and that they might escape her fearful doom. Early writing 277, paragraph 2. The light that was shed upon the waiting ones penetrated everywhere, and those in the churches who had had any light who had not heard and rejected the three messages, obeyed the call and left the fallen churches. Many had come to years of accountability since these messages have been given, and the light shone upon them, and they were privileged to choose life or death. Some chose life and took their stand with those who were looking for the Lord and keeping all of his commandments. The third message was to do his work. All were to be tested upon it. And the precious ones were to be called out from the religious bodies. A compelling power moved the honest, while the manifestation of the power of God brought in fear and restraint upon their unbelieving relatives and friends, so that they dare not, neither had they the power to hinder those who felt the work of the Spirit of God upon them. The last call was carried even to the poor, slaves, and the pious among them poured forth their songs of rapturous joy at the prospect of their happy deliverance. Their masters could not check them. Fear and astonishment kept them silent. Mighty miracles were wrought. The sick were healed. And signs and wonders followed the believers. God was in the work. And every saint, fearless of the consequences, followed the conviction of his own conscience and united with those who were keeping all the commandments of God. And the power they sounded abroad, and the power and with power they sounded abroad the third message. I saw that this message was closed with power and strength or ascending the midnight cry. Servants of God endowed with power from on high with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration went forth to proclaim the message from heaven. Souls that were scattered all the religious bodies answered to the call and impressions were hurried out of the doomed churches as Lot was hurried out and Sodom before her destruction. God's people were strengthened by the excellent glory which rested upon them in rich abundance and prepared them to, to, to endure the hour of temptation. I heard everywhere a multitude of voices saying, here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Early writing 278, paragraph 2. Any comments, brothers and sisters, on that? 
I just, um, I think it's, it, it makes you really, when you think about what God has orchestrated from the foundations of the world and knowing that where we are right now, we are literally in, in, in the last final uh, moments and the fact that we are privileged. I wouldn't want it to be said that anyone's blood was on my hands because I, I didn't share the truth and didn't tell people what God, God would have us to say it for the, during this critical time in earth's history. And I really, I counted a, a privilege. Brother Wayne said this earlier, but it's a high calling to be a Seventh Day Adventist. It's not for the weak and faint of heart. And um, I'm just thankful and grateful that you know to to be in the number and to to know Jesus and to be. At the, to, to be at the foot of the cross and to stay there and stay hidden there. That's the only place of safety. Daily, I always pray. I said, God, Jesus, God, thank you for your son being who he is. Because the mercy of God is unsurpassed. I mean, I'm, I'm, I look at my own life, brothers and sisters. The mercy of God is unsurpassed. I mean, it is uh, it's indescribable, indescribable that, that how much God loves us. Amen. I mean, I mean, how, you know, and, each, and I, everyone, every one of us has a testimony why, and how, and every one of us I know would think and say, how would, how can God love me? You know, each one of us saying that about ourselves. How can God still love me? And He still loves you, and He still performing His miracles, and it's wonders past finding out in each one of our lives. And brothers, I don't, I don't listen. I am said this in a long time. I don't remember. If I have, to, if I said it recently, brother, sister, don't give up. I don't care what's going on in your life. Don't give up. Don't stop praying for your children, your family, your brothers and sisters, your mother and fathers. St still pray for them each and every day, every night. Pray for them, brother and sister, that God will bring them into the ark of safety. So that you know, why why life lasts and the blood running warm. Keep praying for them, brothers and sisters. And I found out too. That when you live right by Christ, God will bless your family members. Amen. And the Bible says that. Either your children, children will be blessed. And so, but so just think about it. you have the key to life for your family, brothers and sisters. You have a key to life, eternal life for your family members. And we need to believe that. And for our church members, amen. 